Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. If you've been following these videos, you will notice a difference in how this opening screen appears. Um, it used to have a plain black background, and it now has this sort of marble-looking background. And I want to spend this video explaining where I found this picture, what I did to it to make it suitable for inclusion in the game, and then how I, um, what code I actually used to, to um, tell the game to, um, to use it. So let's begin with where I found it. Um, I found it on the site opengameart.org. I will link to opengameart.org in the description. Um, the site is what you might expect. It is from the name. It is um, free assets for computer games that are available under various um, quite generous licenses. So for example, this um, set of graphics that I'm about to click on is icons you can use for a, um, for a fantasy game. Um, it isn't just pictures, it is mostly pictures, but um, there's also there's also music, for example, um, and sound effects. Um, now, it does have a search uh, function of its own, but I find Google Images gets better results. So what I did was I went to... Um, Google Images, which is images.google.com, and I entered the following text. Site colon opengameart.org. That tells Google to limit uh, the results to only a single site. And then I put seamless dark background image. Uh, seamless in this context means that you can put a copy of uh, the picture next to another copy and it won't be obvious where the pictures end. The, the picture will sort of flow smoothly. And similarly, that you can put the picture on top of um, a copy of itself. And again, it will flow smoothly. So you get a, um, as you can see, a sort of continuous, um, a continuous picture um, rather than a sort of series of blocks. And um, sorry, I'll this one. So I, uh, I looked at the results. This was the best one for my purposes. Um, I went to the relevant site. I looked at the license. This is important. Um, this was the OGA buy license, which means that you have to give credit to the person um, if you're going to use the asset. But you can still use it for free, and you can still use it in commercial um, products and I this was the one and I downloaded this dot PSD means it's a um, a Photoshop file so I downloaded that and it was a little bit um, the whites were a little bit bright for a background image because remember text is going to be on top of this and you don't want an image that is going to um, sort of compete with the text. So what I did then was I went into GIMP, which is my uh, which is my uh, sort of art program of choice. It's a clone of Photoshop. I must admit I don't know how close a clone it is, so I don't know whether what I'm about to say is exactly how you would do it in Photoshop. But this is how this is how I did it. Um, so I loaded up the um, the picture. It seems to only have one layer, so I don't really know why he saved it as a as a Photoshop file. Normally, if you're saving stuff as a PSD, it's because there's multiple layers, and that can be useful because the user might want to say you have um, say the picture is a is a is a as a character. One layer might be the armor, and one layer might be the hair, and one layer might be the weapon or something, and you might a user might want a picture of that character, but I don't like the weapon. 
so you can turn off the layer that's the weapon um, and keep the and, and then it, uh, save that as a picture and um, or you can you know get rid of the hair and you know keep the weapon or whatever but there's only one layer um, so I don't quite see the use of saving it as a um, as a Photoshop file rather than as a PNG or some other sort of picture but nonetheless that's what he did and I went into colors and brightness and contrast and I put the brightness right down and I actually just did that a couple more times I didn't I didn't think that was quite um, actually I think I did it one more time and I thought I thought that was okay so then I exported that rather than overwriting it because I want to keep the original in case I change my mind I exported it as um, and I put it in uh, I put it in pics which is where I keep the um, the pictures in in their forms in which they're actually used in the game and uh, I saved it as marble.png so that is how I found the picture and that is what I did to the picture to make it um, suitable now I'm finally going to show you um, the actual code and this is quite simple um, so we'll get into the bridge we go to story then we go to style sheet and um, when I was changing the background color I went into this section um, I haven't really been into it since then um, because it's one of those things you tend to sort of set and then and then and then forget because you don't normally change the the layout the basic layout that often but anyway we've got um, the body section here um, with curly brackets and we've got the UI bar section with curly brackets um, the this section refers to the the bit on the left that has the um, the character sheet, has the little portrait of the character, and has the the character's stats and what they're carrying. Um, the format is, as you can see, identical. Um, you just have to do the same thing twice to make sure it appears in in both the sections. Um, and all you do is this, and I'll just zoom in to make it a bit easier to read. You go background minus image or background dash image, colon, space, URL, brackets, and then in quotes, the um, location of the uh, picture relative to the game file itself, the HTML file that um, is the main game file. In this case, it's pix, so it's in, in the pix um Pix folder and then it's marble.png which is the actual name of the um, the name of the file and then you end with a semicolon and then of course I had to do exactly the same thing again to um, locate it in the the sidebar now you might wonder why if you've got background image why would I keep background color why wouldn't I why wouldn't I just delete that because Obviously, the picture covers the background color. You can't you can't see this. If I change this to red or yellow or whatever, it wouldn't have any effect at all. Well, the uh, guides to style sheets that I read actually suggested always having a background color as well as a background image, just in case the background image doesn't load for some reason as a sort of backup. But that's not why I did it um, because I don't think it's very likely that um, this image isn't going to load um, and if the image doesn't load there's probably some bigger problem with the program anyway um, the reason I did it was just so I can so I don't have to look again for how to do a plain color if I change my mind and decide that this marble image isn't doesn't look that great I want to have this here rather than having to go looking for it again I can just delete this and then delete that and be back to how I was. So that's why I've kept um, the background color in case you were wondering, although you are advised to do it uh, 
sort of for different reasons by the sources that I read. So that is how to get background images. Um, I haven't done a lot of stuff about making the game look better yet because I've been concentrating on um, trying to get the, the gameplay happening, um, but I will occasionally um, do some stuff about making it look nicer as um, you know, as I as I get the inspiration to do it. So I hope that was of use or interest to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.